So I think this video is something that a lot of men are going to empathize with. Whilst I was in Amsterdam, I had a message from a viewer called Edgar. Now, Edgar over the past few months has been a big fan of the channel and a few times he's left me some messages and I've been able to give him some advice. But his most recent message really hit home for me and I wanted to give him a proper answer to his struggles. So Edgar, this video is dedicated to you my friend and I genuinely really hope it helps. And in case your translator for my video doesn't work correctly, I've also transcribed this video in Spanish for you in the comments. So apologies in advance if Google Translate somehow jumbles the, uh, the messages or sentences for you in this video today. So this was Edgar's message a couple of days ago to me. So Daniel, how much do you think it would be true if a girl is out of your league? Do you believe that leagues exist? Sometimes I see incredibly beautiful women and I say to myself, wow, she's out of my league and I self-sabotage. And then he later sent me a message. Hello, Daniel, please help me. I have this feeling and I feel that I am not worthy of the love of women. And apart from that, they do not take me into account either. I feel terrible right now. However, I do love them. You don't know how. I would like to really love me and take me into account. I'm devastated right now. I would like to talk to you in person, but I don't speak English. Like I would like to have an abundant romantic life, but I can't. I don't know. I feel horrible right now. I'm crying. I don't know where to start. I'll be honest. I haven't approached any girl in the last few months because I tell myself you're not worthy of women's love. You don't deserve women's love. And well, I haven't approached any girls anymore. In response to your first message, unfortunately, I do believe that leagues exist, but how we perceive them is most certainly skewed. I feel that most guys always tend to compare themselves to guys who are better than them or compare themselves to a version of themselves of who they can never be. It's not fair on yourself to compare to a guy who might be better looking than you or smarter than you or have a lot more wealth than you. This only causes self-inflicted pain and sends a very clear and negative message to yourself that you are not good enough and never will. And you don't deserve to do that to yourself, my friend. Now, I don't fully understand your situation or what you look like, but I'm going to throw you a thought provoking question. Have you perhaps considered that maybe you're actually out of someone else's league? That maybe there are women out there who you could be the perfect guy for, but they don't feel that they have a chance with you. What about the possibility that there are guys who are actually envious of you? There could even be people in your current social circle who are jealous of you or envious of you or even compare themselves and their lives to you. And because they believe that they will never be as great as you, they too knock themselves down. It's very easy to miss the fact that yes, there are people who are better than us, but there are also people who are worse than us. But instead of comparing yourself upwards, maybe consider comparing yourself downwards and you'll be pleasantly surprised at how quickly that can humble you. How fortunate you are to have a home, have friends, have family, have a job or education or even a salary. Even having a mobile or a computer to be watching my videos on. There are men out there who can't even do that and they most certainly have my sympathies. Now you also mentioned about the self-sabotage and that is something that I can definitely relate 
relate to. So in 2009, when I joined the pickup industry, I did it because I was looking to get myself a girlfriend. I was 21 years old and I hadn't even kissed a girl at that point. I vaguely remember the pressure was on to try and catch up with my friends and was genuinely getting to that point where I was considering going to an escort to just lose my virginity. But by some divine intervention, I got introduced to the world of pickup and drastically turned things around. And because of that, my confidence dramatically started to grow. I remember being just so excited at the possibility of being able to talk to women and starting to get results that at the time, I wanted two of my closest friends to join in with it too. We were the sort of group of friends who would literally go around each other's houses every weekend to just sit and play PlayStation and then stay up all night just talking about girls. I wanted my friends to join me on that journey so we could all grow and develop together, but in fact, the complete opposite was the case. So as soon as I started to get results and started to genuinely believe that I deserved love from women too, and that with some effort and determination, I could work towards a lifestyle that could actually see me getting a girlfriend. It turned out that my closest friends just didn't want that for me at all. In fact, they actually got angry about it. They would just constantly knock me down and make me feel like crap. All to remind me of where my place was in the social circle. Eventually, they hated the idea of me getting any sort of success with women that they actually exiled me from that group of friends. And that anger and hatred then evolved into threatening to beat me up if they ever saw me again. It's nice, right? So for a while after that, I was really lonely and I didn't have any close friends and even considered giving up my self-improvement journey if it meant having some friends again. But once I recognized that mindset, I then realized that this just wasn't a healthy situation at all. Self-sabotage is a self-fulfilling cycle, and the only way to break it is to recognize it and then change what's causing the issue. In my case, it was the people who I surrounded myself with and how they just weren't even attempting to lift me up or even try to bring out the best in me. And as much as people might knock the pickup industry, it most certainly changed my life for the better. It helped show me what I was capable of and it surrounded me with great friends and a lifestyle that I was just absolutely over the moon for. I think one of the biggest shocks that I then had was that when I'd have then guys meet me after all these years in the industry and just say that they were jealous of me, of me of all things. That I once believed that I was at the bottom of the leagues and with a little bit of hard work and determination, I'm apparently higher up or better than what I thought. So Edgar, I want you to think about your life and all of the experiences and the lifestyle that you live. And with this in mind, I want you to write down all of your good and bad experiences, put them into two columns, one for good and one for bad. And when you do, I want you to look at those lists and really consider that if other guys were to do this same exercise as you, they would have so many things in common with you. And there will be guys out there who will probably have more things in their good column than in their bad. And unfortunately, there will be guys out there who have more things in their bad column than their good. And just know with shifts in your mindset and lifestyle, you can make that good list grow and that bad list shrink. Now onto the second point, my friend. Honestly, my heart goes out to you. I've also been there crying at just how much I hated my life. And funny enough, that's kind of the exact reason what brought me into the pickup industry in the first place. The first bit of practical advice that I would give to you, Edgar, is for the moment, don't worry about meeting women. Just temporarily 
put this idea aside. Accept that for now, you're just not in the right headspace for dating. And until you shift that mindset and approach to dating, chasing women will only make things worse for you now. Now we aren't looking to stop your dating life indefinitely. We're looking to take responsibility on the current situation that isn't working and shift the priorities to areas that just need that bit more love and attention first. Next, we need to establish what the particular problems are with one, your lifestyle, and two, with how you're meeting women. I'm gonna have to be pretty broad here because I don't know the specifics of your life and where your strongest and weakest of areas are. So you'll have to kind of be the judge on that yourself. By giving you broader answers, hopefully this will allow other guys to be able to relate to your situations and then hopefully make the changes themselves. So let's start with lifestyle and following the three Fs, fitness, food and fashion. Being fit and healthy makes a tremendous difference to one's body and mind. Exercise increases testosterone and releases all of the good hormones in the body. It triggers neuroplasticity, which is better cognitive function and happiness, and increases your energy and how you feel about yourself, which is why after a good pump, men are always in the best of moods and are at the top of their confidence. Eating also plays a significant factor in one's life. Eating less junk food and eating healthier can fix someone's energy levels and make them feel more confident in their own skin. Junk food can make people feel slumpy, if that's a word, or create negative feelings towards how they look and feel. So if you can, try and eat right and work out and do exercises, which then leads onto the last area, fashion. Meeting people these days is all about fitting into society appropriately and giving off a great first impression to people, which is exactly what fashion does. Fashion doesn't need to be overcomplicated, but dressing smart can make all the difference when it comes to meeting women. First impressions matter, and you'll find that a person who is dressed in a much more presentable way will certainly get much better results when they're out cold approaching, as opposed to someone who is dressed like as though they've just rolled out of bed. Now, if you're already ticking all of these boxes, then brilliant. If not, then you need to work towards making these changes. The other thing that you might need to consider, which might genuinely be quite tough to do, is to push yourself to socialize and make new friends or meet women in more natural circumstances. As much as cold approaching is good, there are many more time appropriate ways for you to be connecting with people. If you have hobbies, if you have interests, I suggest finding social events in your area and go off and attend them. Meet other like-minded people and learn to be comfortable being around others. Those experiences will be desensitizing you to being around strangers, particularly women, and will also, most importantly, to teach you how to become so much more independent. Which does lead onto my next point. I think developing your independence is incredibly important for you. It will most definitely teach you how to be more secure within yourself and be less concerned with those moments where you aren't meeting or dating women. You have to consider that dating women is about bringing them into your reality, into your world. If you're not happy with your world or your reality, then they won't be either, which is only going to fuel this self-fulfilling prophecy that you have a terrible dating life and that women do not want to be with you. But by having your life in order and being happy with it, that is something that women are going to be attracted to and want to be part of because they know that then you're someone who's not needy or going to be reliant on them. And this can certainly take that strain off of dating. So I want you to practice doing some very simple things on your own. I want you to practice going to dinner to places on your own or travel to places where you might normally go with other people, with friends, so to the cinema or going bowling. The more adventurous of men might attempt to go traveling on their own. 
But more importantly, all of these experiences teach you how to take responsibility for your life and that it's okay to be a bit selfish in the pursuit of your own happiness. But now onto the point of meeting women. And this, my friend, is where the title of this video is the most important for you. You have to learn to love yourself. I don't know what kind of support you have around you, I don't know if you have any past traumas which has led to your current pain, but you do have to be your own best friend here and give yourself all of the support and love that you need. And sadly, if you don't, no one else will. I can genuinely say that I have met thousands of men over the years who have all sorts of traumas and reasons for the pain that they're suffering. But what's true with them all is that they just didn't love themselves. But when they learned to, the ripple effect was just so apparent. And they lived happier lives and built more confidence around how they met women and how they felt doing it. Edgar, I have no doubt in my mind that if you shift your priorities, focusing on the areas of your life that are weakest and above all else, Learning to love and appreciate yourself more will in no time at all bring you the success and love you wish to have from women. And when you're in a good place, the next time you see a beautiful woman that you want to speak to, you'll be ready for it. And there won't be any of this self-sabotage or this like, she's out of my league thing. It'll be you and her on a very equal playing field. Just two amazing people sharing a beautiful moment and having an authentic conversation. I really hope this helps you, Edgar, and apologies that it's taken me a week to get this to you. As you can tell, my life has been a little bit hectic at the moment. And to the other guys watching this, please do implement these changes and I promise you will see some great results too. As always, I've been Dan, that dating anxiety guy. Thank you very much for watching my video and I truly do hope it helps.